So today, um, we're talking about sustainability. I've had a few conversations with, with these guys. We've got Chris Brown. Chris Brown, can I, come on up. We have Kirsten Bell. Yep. And, and we have Matthew. I, I, Matthew, Matt, big hand for these guys. So what we have here today is basically a culmination of talks that we've had sitting in Soho House kind of trying to figure out stuff about sustainability and talking about some of the issues that we've been uh, facing with sustainability within uh, the events industry. Um, uh, and those talks went on for hours. We're going to try and condense this down to 30 minutes, actually 20 minutes. Jasper, can we go a little bit over? Are we OK? Um, Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to try and condense this down to, 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 to 30 minutes. Um, we got a few different interesting stuff. Do you guys all have a microphone? Oh, yes. cool. Excellent. I'm going to take this one instead. Oh, that sounds much better. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, uh, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Robert Rogers, CSEP. CSEP stands for Certified Special Event Professional. Supposedly, that means I know what I'm talking about when you're talking about the whole of an event, when, you look, when you're looking at uh, the administration, coordination, legal, ethical risk management of, of putting on an event. Um, uh, I've also been involved with the events industry nonstop for, for 10 years waving flags, trying to drive sustainability as much as I can, doing it in my own little world uh, by doing different talks and things like that. We have Matthew today. Uh, Matthew has also been raising his little flag, waving his little green flag in his little world, uh, trying, to get, trying to get people on board, particularly on the convention and exhibition side. Um, uh, he is also part of uh, the Sustainable Event Alliance, uh, which is a worldwide organization uh, in Australia, also in, in, uh, in Europe and such. Uh, Kirsten Bell. Kirsten works with, um, uh, with high-end luxury groups doing fancy parties uh, for oh, people you might have heard of, like Rolls Royce and all the LVMH guys and stuff like that. Some of the issues, of course, that you have with luxury is, I guess, trying to convince them that sustainability and luxury actually do go hand in hand. Uh, and of course, we have Chris Brown from Rethink. How many of you have been to Rethink? Anybody? Excellent. It's a good one, isn't it? It's good. They've been bringing Rethink together as a sustainability conference for the business world. Um, so today, we've got uh, a few different questions going across. What we're looking at is we're looking at the recent past. We're looking at the present and then we're looking at the future. I'm going to start with you, Matthew. So you've been doing this for like 10 years, more, more, working at the convention center, uh, working also in Thailand, uh, working Australia? Uh, yeah, uh, Vancouver. In Vancouver and such, OK. And mostly who you're working with is you're working with exhibitors uh, who are trying to put on exhibits in the convention space. And you're trying to uh, you're trying to help them to become more sustainable. What in Hong Kong in particular? What some of the challenges that you've had within the last ten years of you know going from where we were coming till now? Okay, um, the most challenging thing, uh, surprisingly, is not from the client side; it's from the supplier side. For uh, for example. Um, the uh, frontline uh, installation workers, uh, the friendly owners, and uh, such as the um, cleaning ladies who work for us. For example, uh, the, uh, it's difficult for, to change the uh, habits of work and the mindset, how to implement sustainability for my events. For example, um, you know, uh, the installation worker love to put sticker on everything. They put sticker on paper, put on wood, put on foam board, plastic, everything. And that plastic wrap stuff. Yeah, so, so it makes the uh, uh, virgin material unable to recycle. Yeah. And other example is um, uh, the cleaning, uh, cleaning workers for, uh, work for us. Even though we put a lot of recycling bin uh, in the conference hall, and your audience is very good to put uh, the waste into the correct bin, but in many cases, uh, when I go to the basement and uh, the dumping station of the convention hall, I see those workers will combine to mix all the recycling bin into one. So that uh, it required me a very long time and effort, maybe sometimes extra effort, uh, extra manpower to monitor and to 
to monitor the process to make sure my event is delivered in a uh, uh, in a sustainable way. So even when you're separating at source, that source all then ends up going into one bin at yeah. the end. Yeah. And you had some you had some facts and figures before about recycling and such like that. I know that so plastic. I know that 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 only 10% of the plastic that actually is being recycled actually gets recycled in Hong Kong, is that? Uh, no, 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 that, that figure is uh, about EPD, EP, uh, EPD's figure, do you mean? I, I'm sorry, the band is getting a bit loud, can you repeat that for me? <laughs> uh, do you mean which, uh, which figure? Oh, uh, just the, 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 the base on re recycling. Ah, okay, okay. Um, based on some uh, figure uh, research uh, in overseas event organizer, um, the uh, solid waste of uh, of an event is around uh, 10 to 15 percent. Uh, the others, uh, maybe 60 percent, is uh, from uh, 60 percent is energy, energy waste. Okay, yeah. okay, fair enough. And Kirsten, in the last, you know, so you've been driving sustainability within your little world for as long as you can. You're passionate about it. You love it. What's some of the challenges that you've had in the last, you know, in Hong Kong in particular? So, I mean, mainly it comes from our client side of the understanding and the costs that is required to actually recycle or work more sustainably. So right now what we're trying to do is we push from within. I think if we wait for a structure, if we wait for uh, um, a stronger community to be able to ride on that, it's just not going to come. So what we've started to do as now, we have a private recycling system for our office, for our warehouse, and for our events. So what if pays for that service um, and it comes and collects maybe on a once a month for our office and warehouse and then we organize ad hoc for our events. Um, this person can, can actually come and he'll take all of our recycling and he will sort it for us at a cost. But we've taken it upon ourselves because we feel that if we wait for somebody to give us the means of doing that, it goes into the basement, goes into the supposedly labeled bins and actually it gets taken away in the same one and it goes nowhere. Um, I don't know if that answers that chapter. Right uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Chris, on your, what sort of things have you seen? Okay, you've, you've been, Rethink was only in its third year? Uh, this, uh, the event this coming September is the fourth, fourth, the fourth edition. The fourth one, excuse me, excuse me. But you've been in the uh, exhibition side for many years before that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the magic 20, 20 years. 20 years, uh, so I think okay. that's the, the prerequisite to be... Uh, <laughs> and sustain <laughs> to be, uh, sustainability to be, to be has always been part of your ethos in, in that. Yeah, very much so. Um, as I left the UK to move to Hong Kong, there was a, a kind of embryonic um, kind of discussion going on in the, in, within the UK exhibition industry around uh, collaborating towards more sustainable events. And when I then came to Hong Kong in 2015, um, that discussion just wasn't even embryonic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, as I kind of got to grow uh, and, and fell in love with Hong Kong, uh, then came up with the concept of designing uh, a sustainable event about the business of sustainability. And so, uh, our ambition is to be the most sustainable event at the convention centre, uh, but more importantly, to help the, the stakeholders and the, the community that we're building uh, kind of around the Rethink Hong Kong movement, uh, is to bring experts uh, and to bring inspiration and ideas that our delegates can then take back into their business and start to drive that transformation. Now, whether that's internal transformation within, within your business or along your value chain, uh, there's a, a huge amount of work to do and not very much time to do it. And our kind of accelerate the change is our kind of motto to try and push Hong Kong forward, um, to kind of promote a sense of collective responsibility among the business community uh, as we try to get towards uh, carbon neutrality by 2050 and start to introduce more circular thinking in how we do business day to day. Nice, nice. The, um, so just going back to, to, to recycling and stuff like that. So in the past in Hong Kong, we used to recycle lots. Yeah, we had separation of bins, everything, everything was recycled, but it was all actually getting shipped off to China. Is that right? And then was it 2018? Yeah. 20, 2018, China implemented the China Sword policy. Yeah. Uh, and in that policy, so not just Hong Kong, but worldwide. Uh, in Canada, the US, everybody was shipping all of their waste to China and it was being, being recycled there. And of course, China was, a lot of the stuff that was coming across was not really recyclable, which is why China got, got a bit pissed off and said, stop this. Um, and so they implemented the China Sword policy, which stopped all recycling going into China. How did that change for Hong Kong 
what, what, what effect did that have for Hong Kong? Uh, it affects uh, how uh, we kind of have uh, a recycler to collect our event waste after the event. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that uh, starting from that, it is also about, uh, uh, so I really encourage uh, our, uh, our clients, uh, event organizer, to have a, a waste reduction, reduction plan at the event planning stage. Not, uh, not to plan how to recycle the waste or uh, where to go uh, after the event, but plan your event. You, because you, you will know how many ways you will create when you, uh, when you produce your backdrop, your uh, souvenir, you will know how many ways you are, you are going to create. So we have to plan at the uh, initial stage. Yeah. Right, so, so because in Hong Kong we, we don't have, I mean, it's been changing. The government has been doing some great stuff. They, they now have uh, Alco, who's doing the the, the e-waste stuff. We're doing bottles now. Uh, however, still, I think I think the figure is somewhere around only 10% of the actual plastic that goes recycled actually gets recycled. Um, and so, because of that, recycling is kind of that after after effect thought. And so, you don't want to think about it afterwards, you want to think about it Before beforehand. Point, yeah. So and you want to do that when you're doing your designs. So in the original designs, what am I designing this with? What am I making this with? Where is it going to go afterwards? And such yeah. like that. So Kirsten, you, you are all about now, all about as soon as possible doing stuff. What sort of things are you guys doing? How do you design your events? Because luxury, you know, they want, it, they want the finest the finest of velvets, I think, was velvet was, a, was an issue, wasn't it? Was a topic, it? yeah. I won't even say how many linear meters I trashed. Um, I think, like I agree, preempting where you're going into a venue, having a discussion about uh, air conditioning hours, electricity hours, I think that that is not something you can discuss with a venue at one o'clock in the morning when you're trying to minimize power or because you've just decided that you don't want to have the AC on because you got to discuss that beforehand. I think you need to be fair with the venues and you need to kind of help. And it's not so much educate them because I think who am I to be educating on that higher front? It's just making sure that we're all aligned. When you're going into a ballroom, a convention center, uh, or a pier, it's what are we trying to do? It's in their best interest as well as ours. Saying that, moving forward, in luxury, I do create a lot of excess materials. And I do have to think what I do with it afterwards because I don't have the luxury of sitting down with the likes of all of those luxury people and saying, let me tell you a story about what's going to happen to the world if we don't do something now. And they also have global breathing down their necks anyways. So right now what we've got is that we have a warehouse in our own space where we will actually reuse and upcycle or recycle a lot of the furniture, decoration items, uh, lighting. So if anybody needs anything, let me know because I've got a warehouse of Mary Poppins style. I got one as well. Fantastic. Um, but in my dream, and if I can share, this is where I'm at right now. I'm excited, I'm okay. excited. Okay. I visualize the issue is at night, we're all dismantling, and I think all of us in events, we know that it's that midnight or that two o'clock or three o'clock crunch where we're kind of hitting the clock to get out of there. The boys are going as fast as we can to trust, box up, and get it in a truck and get the hell out of there. Is that a swear word? No, no it was a okay, truck, okay. you said truck. A truck. Um, so what I would ideally like is to have a venue that is open 24 seven, that is funded by somebody nice. The Green Events Fund. The Green Events Fund. And all of us in the Green Event community would be able to take our trucks there, unload what we know is somewhat recyclable. And then during office hours, we would have the green community people who would then be able to actually divide and then be able to separate what is recyclable, what is downcyclable, what is upcyclable. So it's giving the time and space for those jobs that exist. So it's not that Hong Kong doesn't know how to do this. It's just in all fairness in events, and I think we all know what it is, it's we're working 24 seven and we can't expect everybody to working on a 24 seven schedule like we are. But we can't also kind of hold a truck full, or in my case, 10 trucks full of stuff uh, until somebody opens their office at nine o'clock and kind of say, ah, computer says, no, I don't have this, you know, labeled out or I don't know what this material is. So that's my dream to have ASAP. So wait, wait, just to get it straight, so similar to what Alba, is that the company? Alba is doing with uh, e-waste and washing machines and stuff like that. You drop it off, it goes to their space, which is out 
near the border in the new territories, and then they go in, they take the washing machine, they take the, the, the metal thing on the outside, it goes into one pile, they take the mechanics, the, the mechanics go into another one, the, the, the rubber tubing, the stuff that isn't recyclable goes into one, and then they try and recycle. So the same thing that you could do with a stage, with a backdrop, something like that. So they would go in, they would take the wood, the wood would go into one pile, they would take the metal from underneath, and the metal would then get recycled. Yeah, is that even, what you're talking about? Absolutely, and even bigger then is like the furniture, like how many of us buy it on Taobao, customize it, redo it, and then it's done. We, I, I can't reuse it for the same client, so if it's generic, I'll bring it to the warehouse. Otherwise, I'm trying desperately to get somebody at three o'clock in the morning to come and get 10 high chairs with a, you know, a leopard cover with pink frou-frous on it. Not which which also comes back into the planning. So one of the things that you can do is donate, yeah. donate stuff. But you can't donate it at three, o'clock, at in three o'clock in the morning. Correct. So you need to plan in advance. Find somebody who wants your leopard skin frou frou chairs, um, and say, hey, after this, do you you know do you, do you want them? And come pick them up. Um, or whatever. it goes into this magic space. Or it goes into the magic space. And okay. then we then have this system where you know Salvation Army or there's a bunch of charities that are very keen on this, but they're also lacking in space or manpower or logistics. So it's having a platform where all of us can, as a community, use that platform. 360 degrees. That'd be fantastic. That's a nice idea. Do you guys, would you guys use something like that if it came up? How many of you would use it? Excellent. We got a few out there. Good. Okay. You're part of our green community. You are now, you've been in. I'll give you a little badge afterwards. Yeah, you'll get a little badge. You'll get a little badge. So that's kind of, and and now, and also, sorry, sorry, uh, now, what are you doing? You said now in your office, you guys are so in our office, in our warehouse, in our events, we have a private system called uh, Love Recycle. Um, and Can, God bless him, he comes around in his truck and he'll come and pick up a bag full of all recyclable materials and he will sort them out in his factory. He does that for us once a week. So I store all of that in my warehouse for him to come and collect uh, once a week. He will do the same thing on events, but that requires pre-planning, and it also requires me to preempt what the material is. A vinyl banner, does it have sticker on it? Then it can't be recycled because it's glue on it. So it's a lot more work, and going back to your very first point, today, I'm not sure and open to who can help me on this, explain that to a client that that has cost to it. Like, I, we can't keep on you know, putting in these ideas, these action plans, and actioning them if somebody's not behind kind of saying, you've got my blessing, go ahead and do it, I'll accept that it's gonna cost money. When in the rest of the world, you're not only paying to get your recycle bins collected, you'll get fined if you don't do it. So my question is kind of why, why is it so fearful that it's gonna cost a little bit of money to, to save the world? Yeah, well, it'll be, be very interesting to see what the polluter pays thing happens and what happens with all of that money, maybe we can get them to donate to our green fund. <laughs> but speaking of green funds, future and what we're doing in the world to make the world a better place. So a lot of you have been to the Rethink Conference. The Rethink Conference for me was quite amazing because so I've been passionate about sustainability stuff and I go and hang out with all the green folks. And I find very often in the Hong Kong green community, it's very much an echo chamber. It's, it's the wonderful people with, with the shark guys, plastic free seas, it's, it's all of these guys. And they're all, you know, it's this echo chamber, this silo that they're all talking amongst themselves. But going to rethink was really eye-opening. It was fantastic. And I think what you're doing with that, Chris, is, is absolutely amazing. Because what you've done is you brought, bring together like top executives from, from MTR and Jardine and Mercedes-Benz and, and BMW, all of these guys, and you're bringing them all together, and, and the finance, the, the, the fintech, fintech guys and all that, and you're bringing them together, and they're sharing their experiences on, on logistics, on planning, on all this. And, and because within the events world, we actually do all of those things. We have the logistics, and we have the, the finance, and we have all of that. We're, we're bringing all those together. I found within your conference, lots of different ideas that I could use. And future-wise, wh where are you going with it? What are you, what's happening? Um, I think we still need to talk about now. Um, okay. you know, I think that there is still so much, so much uh, of a, a mindset change that needs to happen. Um, and I think if we start to look too, too far into the future, we might, might lose ourselves. Um, you know, there, is, there is obviously ambitions being set by organizations, companies, the stock exchange. Uh, and the government, uh, and I, but I don't feel that there is enough of a groundswell yet in terms of organizations that truly understand just how important this is. 
uh, and also those there are those that don't understand yet uh, how much of an opportunity this is as well. Um, you know, sustainability has been you know a thing for you know over two decades, um, but the number of companies now that have um, a, a, a strategy for their sustainable transition, uh, you know, globally is uh, under two percent of, of organisations, uh, and I imagine that's probably even even less so for Hong Kong. And so what we've what we're trying to do through to through rethink uh, is, is to kind of is to galvanise the uh, the ambition that is out there uh, to put on show some of the amazing innovation and strategic thinking that is being done by some of the organisations that are own, own and operate the buildings around us at the moment, uh, and try and really try to impress on everyone from a from a business but also from a lifestyle perspective uh, that you know everyone does have a, a role and responsibility to to contribute. I think if we can start to change the dialogue and we can change people's mindsets, then we can look towards the future. Um, because I, for me and, and my family, certainly want a Hong Kong that is you know, cleaner, greener, more equitable, fairer, um, you know, a, a city to live in. And I think or mo most people pro probably want that too. Uh, but the way, the way we're going, uh, I think it's, we are off, definitely off course at the moment. So I think we need to look at actually where we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it, uh, and there are many different ways that an individual and an organisation can can start to you know pick that low hanging fruit from 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 the tree. I'd agree with you on one point: is that yes, we are off course on a bit, but from what I see, you know, from the people that have gathered for this talk, I see interest. I see I sure. see people wanting to change. I see. I, 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 Absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm not, seeing, not, I'm not, seeing I'm that not. groundswell happen. Shh. Okay. Right. All right. And, and maybe the four, the, the 4,700 delegates who came to, to rethink um, is that is that groundswell. Um, but I think the you know the it honestly it's not enough. Um, you know you, you said we don't want to have those conversations in an, in an echo chamber, and, and you're right to say that re, the way that rethink has been designed is to prevent that from from happening. Um, you know there are 320 something thousand businesses in Hong Kong. Uh, not all of them with a with a direct uh, you know, physical footprint, but that's a lot of organisations that are that are that are that are based here, uh, and so that's a lot of organisations that need to be brought into the conversation. We need to dem demonstrate the business case for change. And so you're doing that. So one of the other things that you're doing is you're working with the HKCE. Yep. Uh, yep. So okay. I'm on the executive committee of the HKCE, uh, Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Industry Association, uh, and we have a within the executive committee now have a remit uh, for our sustainability subcommittee is to produce um, a sustainability charter. Now this will be very much in line with the global net zero events, uh, sorry, net zero carbon events uh, initiative, uh, which it, one of the three founding partners of that is UFI, U -F -I, and they are the Global Exhibition Industry Association. Uh, and they at, uh, at Sharm El Sheikh at, uh, at COP um, finally released that, that blueprint for, for large scale trade exhibitions. Uh, and we will be using some of that information to put into the sustainability charter. Now, that conversation is happening at a kind of an executive level within the industry and seats at that table are occupied by the Convention Center, Asia World Expo, uh, HKTDC, Global Sources uh, and smaller organizers like us. Um, the challenge we have uh, is when you start to aggregate how many exhibitors all of those events, not, and let's go back to before, um, aggregate how many exhibitors those events account for. H HKTDC alone in 2019, 2020 had 39,000 exhibitors. And so trying to get the message across to those individual organizations that come from all around the world, don't necessarily have a vested interest in the sustainability of that event or Hong Kong trying to get the, the message across that we are now starting to go through a, a period of transition where we are going to start bringing in rules. We are going to lower the booth height. Uh, Informa, for example, uh, in Europe and the Middle East uh, have over a three year period introduced a maximum booth height limit of three meters. Uh, now, if you go to, I think if you probably go to the convention center now and you look at the jewelry show, there's double decker stands, there's booths of 10 meters high. How do you start to manage that conversation with your exhibitor? Uh, it's about having a pathway. Uh, it's about having, firstly, having the conversation and getting them engaged and demonstrating them that overnight, you're not just going to flip the switch and go, right, it was 10 meters, now it's three. You've got to go on that journey with your stakeholders. Absolutely, and explain, explain to them you know, the whys and then have that conversation in the dark as much as you can. And if they're not listening, you have to sort of you know, nudge them. Or The other thing that I, I, I think is that as, as, um, as the event managers, we have, we have a lot of power 
because we actually control the budgets. So we're, you know, we're the ones that are presenting the suppliers. We're the ones that are, are you know, trying to decide where that money is going to go. So when we're doing the designs in the first place, we can kind of say, hey, oh, you have this option. Oh, or look, here's, here's a greener option. And if they have within their remit, they have a sustainability thing, it's up to them to hopefully go for the greener option, which might be a little bit more expensive. Uh, but, but yeah, it helps. I mean, we, you, we've, you've, you've we're, also... we're, we're fortunate in a way with Rethink that our, our stakeholders that, are, that support us and are, are, are part of the event, uh, they are part of an event for sustainability. So having that conversation with them about the materials they can use, the materials they can't use, um, why, we are put, where, why we are putting out these kind of restrictions on them as to how they can operate within the event. So we ban, obviously ban plastic bottles, we ban, ban foam board, we ban pull-up vinyl banners. Um, I hope that all those, all, everyone who's taking part in the event are already on, on board. But you start to talk to, um, I don't know, let's just say, the, oh, the gem and the jewelry show. You know, that is not a, sustain, a sustainability community. Uh, and so you're going to like pushing pushing water uphill. You've got a you know a tough conversation to have. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it's I think it's up to us as planners to kind of initiate that conversation. You might not win overnight, but at least you can start it. You can plant the seed in their head. Um, when, the other thing you have, you've got uh, what's what, the 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 rethink fund yeah. foundation. The rethink foundation. What is yeah. That about? So this is something I'm so incredibly proud of that we are even in a position to have incorporated the rethink foundation. Uh, so from our events, uh, our delegates pay to attend, uh, but we don't retain any of that revenue. All of that revenue goes into the, will now go into the Rethink Foundation. Uh, and through a strategic partnership with Hands On Hong Kong, uh, we will then facilitate the design and implementation of, uh, of three impact projects that will run for a two year period, which will support disadvantaged communities in Hong Kong, both from a social impact and an, an environmental awareness. So I like to say that the uh, good things happen because uh, of, of people coming to rethink. Uh, they're help, helping to draw uh, attention to some really important causes, uh, and also it, give, it gives us a license to operate as well. You know, we're a commercial, commercial organizer, but we want to make sure that we're delivering uh, positive impact and positive change, not just from an environmental perspective, but from a social engagement as well. We're running out of time, and I just want to make sure that we we, we get this last one thing in there, which is. A lot of the talk that we've been talking about today, a lot of people, I see a lot of people going, yeah, that's great, but uh, where am I going to go with it? What can I, you know, what can I, what can I do? I mean, Kristen is, is doing some great stuff with, within her. Um, uh, but one of the things that you can all do is that you can look up ISO 20121. Does, how many of you know what ISO 20121 is? Anybody? There's a couple out there. Good, 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 good. So, so what that is, is it's a sustainability management system. It's available from ISO. You download it. You pay whatever it is, like 100 uh, um, uh, Swiss, Swiss CHF francs. Yes, Swiss francs. Um, uh, and, and that you get the system with it. And basically, that works alongside of your operational management system. It's not... It doesn't have to change things overnight. It's a self-certification system. But what it does is it gives you the pathway to be able to, uh, to, to bring sustainability into your events through, um, through getting buy-in from, your, from, your, uh, uh, buy from all your stakeholders to having those difficult conversations and things. We've got one minute and 30 seconds. Is there anybody out there that has any questions that we can answer really quickly like? Is there anybody? We'll no, give it, we've, we've, I'll give it two seconds. We've done it. We've nailed it. We've nailed it. We've nailed it. We've told you everything you need to know about sustainability for the rest of your life, and, you, and, you, and you've totally got it. And you're all going to go out there, and you're going to make all of your events green from now on. Is there anything that you guys would like to add? One last thing? Any of you? I, yeah, just, I can just finish on the, you know, it really is about mindset. Um, I think you, if you, if you find, your, find your allies within your community, you can be, you can be strong, uh, you can find common ground, uh, and I think you know, strong, stronger together. So we spoke about it this morning, about the power of partnerships and collaboration, and uh, that is um, certainly absolutely true in terms of sustainability. Power, yeah, the, 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 you're absolutely right there, the, the partnership thing, because with the partnerships, we're, we're all in this together. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. And sharing your knowledge. I think once you know a trick or you know what you're doing or you feel more comfortable, Matt's really good with finding facts and figures. So whatever he says, like he's backing it up, he knows exactly what he's doing and where he's going. Share that knowledge. There's a lot of, I think, um, 
education for better word people don't actually know what it's what it is there's greenwashing that's going on as well like what is that all about like is it genuine when people say i'll be more sustainable in my event are you though but is that actually better than nothing so there's a lot every one of you can actually do something join together you can do something better the four of us we can freaking nail this absolutely with your uh, help okay. yep yep Okay, uh, one more. Um, I think uh, um, uh, fighting climate change is a science. So that we have to, if we, if we want to meet the uh, ultimate target of the Paris Agreement for, uh, on behalf of the industry, we have to run and plan our event in more scientific way. For example, uh, Rob said uh, the ISO 2012 one, and we should start to collecting data for our event. Um, how many, how many uh, plastic crop you are creating? Uh, how many uh, signage you have to bring in? Uh, how many hours of uh, uh, air conditioning and lighting you have switch on? Uh, how many uh, round trip uh, you are from the venue into your home? You have to collect every data. Is it important to yeah. Absolutely. If you if you measure it, you know what you've got to fight, and you know where you can where you can can adjust. Um, uh, check out greenevents.hk. It's, it's a labor of love. There is some stuff on there. There's more coming up. We'll be having all of this stuff from this talk will we'll, we'll be on there. Greenevents.hk, check it all out. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for our panel. Thank you very much for all of them for donating their time and their wonderful expertise. Oh, and hold your microphones up to your face and look professional because they're taking photos of us.